Let's do it. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Short Bus Cinema. If you listened to the last episode, then you know we kind of talked about the good stuff. Well, we're going to see how this one works out, because I don't think it's going to be on the same playing field as, as what we just dealt with. Um, so what we got is always myself, Rick Morgan, and then my partner in crime, Mr. Johnny Krug. What is up, man? What is up? We are back with maybe the best movie ever made. <laughs> The biggest Oscar snub in existence. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so, to, <laughs> <laughs> so to go along with that, we have a very special guest with us, and it's it's none other than Mr. Neil Lamore from NFW Podcast, uh, a good friend, a great podcaster, uh, tickled to have him on. What's happening, man? Hey, it's uh, nice to be here. It's been a long time coming that's for sure and uh yeah i'm this so is what glad you bring that, us <laughs> i'm so glad that i brought this movie to you guys <laughs> yeah so <laughs> the reason we're all cackling is because yeah we got a special guest but boy do we have something not so special for you this episode <laughs> dude here's the thing man we i feel like in the beginning, we were putting out, you know, like, send us your bad movies, and people were like, oh, man, you gotta see, like, you know, Chairman of the Board, and I'm like, that's not that, I mean, that's watchable, and then we are like, no, guys, we're talking about, like, really bad, piss poor, no production value garbage, and only a few people, like, really come at us with them, and, and this, this, man... <laughs> this is this is a short bus contender for the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, and and we're jumping way ahead of ourselves too. But it's very true. Um, this could uh, this could break us. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of the show, folks. So you better enjoy it. <laughs> oh man, hey, but it's been done, man. That's the thing is, like, I uh, it's you know I watch all these movies. A lot of them I haven't seen, but like. Each one, I'm kind of like, no, oh, I could go back and watch this and stuff, you know? Like, like I, this is kind of fun. And Winter Beast from 1992, man, this movie. <laughs> this is, I mean, all I could keep telling myself to make it a little better was singing the uh, the Rob Zombie song, I'm your Winter Beast. <laughs> <laughs> and, although it's Super Beast. <laughs> what's funny is because uh, I, there's even a part in this movie where I'm going to talk about Rob Zombie in, in, in a weird kind of way. <laughs> That's funny, dude. <laughs> Before we jump into all this, what we're going to do is we're going to take a real short break. We're going to come right back, and we're going to fire a couple of loads right into the Winter Beast. Be right back, folks. <laughs> <laughs> You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension of not only a film and sound, but mind. A journey into an auditory movie review adventure that must be experienced to be believed. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Doomsday Clock. You can extract the Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock podcast by either searching for WYCH on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, tune in, and on your Android device. Which versus the Doomsday Clock is a proud member of Legion Podcasts. So prepare yourself. The podcast ice is gonna break!
back with Winter Beast from 1992. Although um, Google says 91, and reading further into this, it was filmed in 86, <laughs> given up for two years, and then the rest was shot in 89. So, um, and it's weird because you could kind of tell a shift in quality, but everybody looks exactly the same. Like the continuity of that is the one thing. They did right in this movie <laughs> was having the people look like three years later, ease right back into their role, well, which I thought was kind of cool. I'll, I'll bring some things to light as we go along as far as that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm trying to I'm trying to give this movie a little credit. You know who gives this movie a lot of credit? Who's that? IMDb. <laughs> this movie has a five point one. Oh, my God. What? Dude, there are there are Argento movies that have less than that and i don't care what you think about some of the worst argento movies none of them are worse than this <laughs> i like to call this movie I, I changed the name of the movie halfway through it it's no longer winter beast it's named after one of my favorite 80s bands haircut 100 because there's about a hundred different haircuts that happens in this movie as we go along oh man maybe i was just i don't know maybe i was just blind to that <laughs> well it's i mean that's that's probably the like the you know it's probably more likely since i was trying to like I was I was really clutching here to try and find things good about this. Oh, you 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 were looking for a plot, weren't you? <laughs> oh, hey, and, and 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 there isn't, man. There there is no, you know, some movies. I'm like, man, they're just laying on the exposition. This movie could have used any, like any exposition. Oh, my heart is so warm right now. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is written and directed I broke the by. Bus. <laughs> this movie is written and directed by Christopher Thies, who. This may shock you. Only did this. No. <laughs> yeah, only this. It's I don't I don't know. I, I tried. I was like, there's no way. Of, of course he did something else, but and it stars I'm gonna say these this these names like they mean anything. Tim Morgan, Mike Magri, Charles Makja, and Bob Harlow. And uh <laughs> I didn't look at their um, I didn't look at their other credits, but I doubt there are any. <laughs> I, I, I've got one name to bring up here, and believe it or not, it's the special effects guy, Steve Fiorilla. I guess that's how you say his name. Who's that? Well, he kind of went on and did some other things. I don't know if you if you guys listen to any docking or not, but you know George Lynch had a guitar. It was a skeleton playing. You know, his guitar, oh, yeah. that was made by Classic. this guy. This, well, I mean... The, the special effects guy in this made that. And he also, there's a song they had called Burning Like a Flame, and this guy did all the special mm-hmm. effects in that video. So, Great talking. That's, that's, that's kind of surprising, because that guitar is pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. It is. It don't look like it came out of but this then again, <laughs> But But, but the, yeah, well, the thing is about that guitar, I mean, if they had tried to, like, shoot any docking videos with stop motion using that guitar, it probably would have been a fail. Well, well here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's what I want you to do, Johnny. After this movie, pull up Burning Like a Flame, and that guitar gets dropped on the ground, and it starts becoming stop motion animation and does some things that looks a lot like what happens in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That's, that's awesome. I am gonna look that up. <laughs> I, I am. I'm gonna look it up. Awesome. You got anything else from uh, stats on this thing, or are you ready to roll? No, no, I have nothing. <laughs> right, <I'm laughs> no, just, I have nothing. I'm just gonna say before we get into this, I watched this the other night, sit through it, and I even put a message out to the guys with you know, that was like, "Look, I have no idea what I just watched." <laughs> and then <laughs> last night. I watched this movie for almost four hours, trying to make notes. What? Yeah, <laughs> I spent more time watching this movie than the director you took making it. <laughs> Just trying to make some sense out of this thing, so we can communicate this movie to you. So uh, yeah, I put in some work on this one. I feel for you, and Neil, Neil, your podcast did a commentary on this, right? Yes, we did, and it was probably one of our funniest ones ever, but yeah. It had to be. <laughs> we did. This, oh, I can imagine. This yeah. is the the fourth, fifth time I've seen this movie. It was introduced to me by uh, Duncan McLeish and um, the leader of the Legion podcast yeah. over there. Um, Bo? Yeah, Bo. Oh, I forget yeah. his name. Bo. Bo. Yeah. So they had a... They had a watch party one night. This one and uh, some movie, uh, some movie that might have even be worse than this about a, a cabin in the middle of the desert. <laughs> it was pretty bad, but uh, yeah, they introduced this movie to me, and I was just like amazed. Oh, I was no. just like, I gotta do this on my show. Not cabin, in, <laughs> not cabin in the desert. The follow up to Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I can't. I wish I could remember the name of it because it's it's pretty bad as well. Oh. It'd be it's a good double feature with this one, man. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's try to describe this movie. So starting <laughs> off, you have what? no idea what's happening. It just you you see a it looks like a cop is having a nightmare, and he's like in an office. And he looks at this dude that's sitting there. He's like, "Hey, are you all right?" And he goes, "Yeah, I'm fine." Then he turns around and his face is like, half, the opera. "Yeah, it's like face is half melted." And the the cop that you think is a cop at the time, he's not really a cop. He's a forest ranger, but we don't know that yet. He looks at the guy and kind of freaks out. And then all of a sudden, it looks like somebody took a an action figure of Skeletor. And cut its arms and legs off and put tentacles on it. And it jumps up in front of the guy and starts waving back and forth. I have no idea what it is. I mean... (laughs) I literally wrote Attacked by an Action Figure. Yeah. I mean, it looks like Skeletor that's been melted and painted red. And these tentacle arms are flapping. Kind of like Sucker Man from back in the day. And the dude that's got the messed up face is sitting in the chair. is just sitting there kind of laughing and pulling the meat off of his stomach. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, pretty good effects though like on that part that's yeah that's not terrible it just lingers on it way too long yeah i'm still yeah. Fid- i'm still fiddling with my meat you know <laughs> <laughs> he likes to edge yeah yes <laughs> and uh then the, the the cop wakes up with a haircut yeah. <laughs> you know he's in a wife beater and he wakes up and this footage is just terrible man this looks like it's almost like somebody wanted to make a Herschel Gordon Lewis movie. It, it's that kind of quality, but in the 80s. So if that gives you any kind of visual, it, it, it looks like a late 50s, early 60s home video shot movie, but it was done in the 80s. So that makes it kind of worse. Oh, I have it. Yeah, dude, I have it written down that it was released in the 90s, but it looks like it could have been shot in the late 70s, early 80s. It's got a total Herschel Gordon Lewis feel about it. Of course, they find the old boxes of all the stuff. We'll get to that. But like I said, the cop wakes up with the haircut, and then it just cuts away to another, I guess it's a forest ranger, uh, that uh, looks like he's got Henrietta from Evil Dead 2 busting out of his chest. He's just up against a tree. Uh, yeah, this thing starts busting out of his stomach, kind of alien style. And there's no explanation. It's just happening. Even <laughs> that's that's a lot of this movie. Even though dude just woke up from the dream of seeing you know Two Face over here with his Skeletor figure, now we got this dude, and then it just cuts to two dudes in the office, and the wind yeah. is then the wind is blowing in the background, and I, you know there's no <laughs> there's no explanation. We're not even six minutes into this movie yet. And you don't even know what's going on. <laughs> well, you know what's even weirder about that is the two dudes. Well, you cut to that scene with the two dudes in the uh, station, the office, whatever this is. Yeah. And one guy's talking about how he brought the other guy there. And then he shows him like a nudie magazine. He's like, oh, you bet you bet you like this. <laughs> and, and, and then and then in the next scene, he's talking to another guy. And, and he said he was brought there by the other dude. I'm like, well, who brought who? <laughs> like, <laughs> who brought who? Who brought you? <laughs> That's my favorite ACDC song that wasn't on the soundtrack. I love it, too. Uh, n- hey, Nudie, just jump in here anytime, man. <laughs> this is uh, your, this you're, is you're your baby, dude. So far. Yeah, you're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, he's sitting back and watching us just <laughs> try to make sense out of this thing. I see what you're doing. So I'm something floating here. <laughs> uh, so these two guys, like you said, they, they bring in this guy that's wearing double flannel, which... <laughs> You know, I, I, you know, I, I'm all I'm all for. We had double denim before, but not double flannel. Yeah, and denim, uh, Dan. This is like grungy Gary. <laughs> technically, technically, they are on a mountain, supposedly. So uh, I love how you be, just cold there. I love how you just said that. Technically, they're supposedly on a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with it. I'll go with that. And I love the fact that in the background of all this, you just hear a wind going <laughs> the whole time. So they bring this dude in with the double flannel, and this dude's name is Dick Sargent. Did y'all catch yes. that? <laughs> yeah, I wrote that down from Bewitched. <laughs> All right. uh, and then a uh, haircut cop shows up in the office where you know you got Dick Sargent and this other guy that's sitting there with, with his sunglasses on. 
I just call him sunglasses because he never takes them off. It doesn't matter what time of day it is, what season it is. Uh, he's like he's like Corey Hart. <laughs> he wears the sunglasses <laughs> at night. <laughs> and uh, so they're sitting there, and they say that this officer is missing. His name is Tello. Now, I don't know if Tello was the cop we saw or the ranger we saw with the thing busting out of his chest. I don't know if Tello is the dude that was in the chair with his face melting with the Skeletor figure. I don't know if they're both the same dude. I don't know. (laughs) But anyways, he's missing. And in the office is Sally. Now, Sally is the the female co-worker of this bunch. She's the female ranger of the bunch. And haircut cop goes in to talk to her. And she looks like she's been beat up. It's like she's been in the Evil Dead movie. She's all roughed up looking and stuff. And he's like, so what happened? And she says, nothing. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> this, whole, this whole movie is, the whole beginning, there's nothing but long talking scenes between two people back and forth with each other. And it looks like they're in separate rooms, like just cut together. <laughs> it's so fucked up. Yeah, I mean, it, it just... You just sit there going, there's got to be something that ties some of this stuff together, but there's not. I think at all. Well, that's the thing. It's like, it's a lot of vignettes, but like, I don't think any of them are ever like streamed together. Yeah. <laughs> that's the reason you can't shoot parts of a movie in 83 or 84 and then try to put more shots with it in 89 and then finally try to put it out in the 90s. You know, you're going to lose something in the translation, I think. But while that's going on, back out front in the front office where Sunglasses is talking to Dick Sargent, he uh, starts showing him, like you said, the naked pictures of the girls. from the, it's, it's an old box of stuff. Apparently this is an Indian burial ground slash amusement park. I don't know what else is happening at this place. <laughs> Uh, they got a lot of lodges, a lot of, you know, visitors, and, you know, it's some kind of campsite. I don't know. But it was really happening back in the 50s and 60s. Probably a lot of swanging going on. It definitely has that kind of look as far as <laughs> the locations. And uh, so he finds, you know, Sunglasses finds this box of stuff, and it's got old nudie mags and promos for the place back in the day. And then a uh, haircut cop comes back out, which his name is Whitman, by the way. We'll try to transform into that and he's trying to tell the guy hey in the morning i would like for you so let's back it up just a hair dick Sargent found sally wandering around he brought her back to the to the the campground or whatever but never saw the other dude so we don't know where the dude is so in the morning he wants he wants dick Sargent to get together with sunglasses and take him out and show him where he found her and i'm like dude you're forest rangers. If anybody knows this area, <laughs> it would be you guys, right? <laughs> can't, she, can't, can't Sally show you where she was? <laughs> it's sick that I won't be bothered. <laughs> oh, wow. So, uh, and then for some reason, they just decide, hey, maybe Tello's down at the Wild Goose Lounge. Sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> it's just an excuse to get out of this office, I guess. So, uh, when they're talking about this and get ready to go to the Wild Goose Lounge, which obviously it's nighttime because it's been dark, all this stuff is going on. But then we cut away to uh, a girl taking her shirt off. Yeah, and 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 never explains who she is, right? No, no, <laughs> she's in some. I, mean, kind of- I don't need that explanation for her taking her shirt off, right? But it might have some kind of cohesiveness to anything going on. Now, who needs that? She was a pretty hot looking <laughs> redhead for a uh, for a sixties redhead. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know she, Dude, she she had a mane. I'll tell you that. Yeah, she had she yep. had the eighties do kind of going on there. You could tell this was definitely more of more of the mid eighties when when her shot comes up because there's some other ladies that show up later. It's like, dude, they just they needed to be in a docking video, right? <laughs> but uh, she's stripping off her shirt. And she hears a noise outside, and I, and I love the fact you get a POV camera out front, which is at, like, normal height level, right? So it's like if we were walking with the camera, it's, like, that high. So when he walks up to a window, the window's, like, right where you would be if it was a person. You know, then she freaks out, and, you know, she's took her shirt off, 
No explanation why. But she just kind of <laughs> slightly covers her chest so she can go look out the window, because that's what normal people do. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, all of a sudden she screams the worst scream possibly in film history. I don't know. It's pretty bad. It's not a bad scream. It's a bad reaction. It's kind of like she saw what was killing her. <laughs> <laughs> it's very possible. It's like if you've seen the movie, you've seen the movie Blowout, right? When they're putting the movie together at the beginning of Blowout, and it gets to the girl screaming in the tub, and the killer's going to kill her, and the scream just is terrible. And it's kind of the whole premise of the whole movie. It's kind of the same thing here. The scream is so bad, you're like, wow, that's really bad. But yeah, then I didn't. Of, I didn't think there was going to be any kind of uh, parallel to De Palma in this, but. <laughs> Well, there you go. You went for it. <laughs> wow, he did. I have to use things that I know to to get some sort of description because there's nothing else to go by. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, honestly, I, there are things in this movie that can be totally compared to other movies that are decent. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she, uh, she screams, and then this big, uh, it's Groot. I don't know how else to say it. It's Groot. Pretty much. It's Groot, it's Groot from we Guardians of the it. Galaxy. Walking we up call to it the side. rapey group. <laughs> rapey group. <laughs> rapey group. <laughs> and he reaches in the house and grabs her. Now, now when you when you when you're sitting at home and you're hearing me say Groot, don't think of what Groot looks like in the movies. Like good. <laughs> think of a really bad Groot. Think of Gumby if he was covered in bark. <laughs> dude, dude, I have Gumby written down, man. I have that Gumby slams an action figure into a wall, yeah. like a Barbie doll. Yeah, he grabs the girl through the window and starts slamming her against the house. But well, but it's so hilarious because like the the little, like the doll thing they get for the girl, it doesn't have any <laughs> resemblance to that girl. It like looks, they didn't even try. It looks like the skipper from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <her> little buddy. <laughs> Every time he hits her on the yeah, bill, the, the doll had her her top on too. That was bad continuity. <laughs> oh man, how'd they miss that? <laughs> oh, so we're we're a whopping I don't know ten minutes into this movie now. <laughs> <clears throat> I will tell you this though, man. You you say we're ten minutes into this movie. This movie only runs an hour and sixteen minutes. <laughs> It and does. every time I ch- and every time I check the timer on it, it's like it still had another hour to go. I'm like, what the hell is going on? How is this movie? Is it's like it's like getting longer somehow? <laughs> so much to talk about. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, <sighs> Neil's laughing right, but he told me earlier he had to shut it off halfway through just to get through it just today. <laughs> I've seen it five times before. So. <laughs> Got it on now. I'm watching the rest of it while we talk. <laughs> uh, so after we kill the 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 girl with with Groot, uh, Gumby Groot, Roop, Rapey Groot, <laughs> Groot, <laughs> <clears throat> we go down to the Wild Goose Lounge, and uh, it's it's uh, it's Whitman and sunglasses. To give you a visual of sunglasses, think of Arnold Horshack <laughs> with a receding hairline and sunglasses. That's kind of what we got here. Uh, but they go into the Wild Goose Lounge, and apparently they're having bingo or something in the back room. And they're acting like this is a hot ticket, right? This is a big deal that's going on. And it just looks like an old, you know, a senior citizen's event. But they go in there to meet a guy named Mr. Sheldon, who's also wearing a flannel jacket, a red flannel button-up jacket. They're trying to get with him. And he's planning for this big opening, right? So here we go. We're going to get another reference here. Whitman's coming in and saying, look, uh, we really need your help. And you, you've been here all these years. Your family had this place. T- two of my people are missing, or one of my people are missing. Who who cares how many? There's somebody missing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we need you guys to kind of be on the lookout. And also, if you can, prolong big crowds and stuff so we can get out and do an investigation. And all of a sudden it just turns into Jaws, right? This this guy becomes the mayor in Jaws saying, well, this is our busiest time of the year. We, we're not going to shut things down. Things are just getting rolling, right? He, he's that kind of guy. I know you're missing the guy that hasn't even been 24 hours yet, so let's wait till tomorrow before you start doing anything irrational. 
Yeah. And that's the kind of guy you're getting out of this, right? So he's trying to be, it, it's it's dude from Jaws. That's all there is to it. That's who they're trying to portray this guy to be. And there's no point in the movie, though, where you re- you really ever see, like, a packed mountain. <laughs> or like, no! You know? Hey, well, it, it's, it's just the it's title. Away. The title, Winter Beast. There's not a winter in this movie. <laughs> Uh, I mean, and and there there are many beasts, but you know nothing consistent. That's the other thing too. Shouldn't it have been like at least winter beasts? Because <laughs> because we just saw Groot, we saw Skeletor with his tentacles. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just uh, anyways. <laughs> I don't think you know what though. I don't think any creature in this movie is ever used twice. I think it's all this. It's, they use a different thing. Oh yeah, every time. Yeah, or at least it looks different to me. Absolutely. Yeah. But let's get back to the plot. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we had to throw us off track, Johnny. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so while this is going on, you got Sergeant Whitman and and, she- and uh, Sheldon having this conversation. And while that's happening, you got sunglasses over here hitting on the elderly, saying, hey, if you'll treat me right, I can get you a room and all this kind of stuff. Uh, trying to get him some beer. And then over in the corner, you got Dick Sargent, double flannel, over here talking to another guy, and he uses the same line. Well, I'm just trying to start some conversation. And the guy goes, well, you're doing a pretty shitty job at it. And they get in a fist fight <laughs> just because the guy said that. But you know what? It doesn't matter because uh, they, were, they were raffling off an, a toaster. <laughs> That's all that matters is they're raffling off a toaster, and Sunglasses wins the toaster. Toast for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Toast for everybody. Oh. So the next morning, <laughs> sunglasses and, and Dick meet up. <laughs> Dick Sergeant. Dick. <laughs> and uh, they both have haircuts. Totally different hairstyles from the night before. Maybe they just are stylish dudes. But anyways, they both got different haircuts. And um, Whitman goes to the uh, the Indian souvenir shop. Just throwing that at you. I, there's, again, no explanation Why? Uh, this really reminds me of a place here close to home called Real Foot Lake. You guys may have heard of it. It was caused by an earthquake, yada, yada, yada. And it's got these old 60s kind of tourist attraction things. It's got a little small train that kids could ride on and had fake teepees up. So I kind of get the feel that that's kind of what this thing is. It's that kind of place. There's just no real history to it. They just somebody had the land and decided to merchandising off of it. I don't know. <laughs> but there's this huge souvenir shop. <laughs> and while yeah. Whit- while Whitman is there, Depeche Mode is playing in the background. <laughs> Dude, is that the song that plays a few times in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, that song is really straight up like a, a synthy Depeche Mode type thing. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. So uh but but he they show him having a little confrontation with a dude and it just walks off but there's no dialogue because the music's you know playing and you don't want to interfere interfere with Depeche Mode uh, so you don't really know <laughs> what the conversation was about and then uh, Sunglasses is with uh, Dick Sargent and they see the totem pole so he kind of freaks out and then he goes back and somehow in the matter of the next 10 minutes or so, ends up getting Whitman and Sally and the owner of the souvenir shop to come out and see it. And you're like, okay, what's the connection here? Why is the souvenir guy involved? And how can you still be park rangers or forest rangers and still not know this crap is in place? Yeah, there's not a lot of communication. There is through like nudie cards and nudie magazines, but that's about it. It's kind of like if you owned a business, but you never stepped foot in a factory. I mean, these, these guys are forest rangers. Well, what are you ranging if you're never going out in the forest? <laughs> I just, I don't get it. I mean, it just, it just, they act like they're surprised by everything they see, like it's never been there before. And I'm like, this place has been here since the 50s. Nothing has changed. I love it. Uh, anyways, they, they go get the souvenir shop guy and bring him out there. Don't know why. It's just another way to bring another person in. Lordy mercy. That's my first page of notes. <laughs> Dude, there, there are a lot of people brought into this movie, man, and like they're never really given any kind of reason or like I don't know. They just yeah. some people I don't even think some people have names. Uh, 
yeah, I, it's almost like maybe he had plans for them later on in some other stuff, and then he just scrapped the idea. So, I mean, Sally is pretty much pointless. But hey, who who am I to say, right? Anyways, that's the kill count. Yeah, yeah, I think it's that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're watching the clock, right? So we know that every 15 minutes you got to have somebody knocked off. So you got to have extra. Well, we'll get to it because there's another guy here. I'm like, no mention who this guy come from. Uh, but Whitman says that uh, he saw this this uh, totem pole, which we'll kind of describe the totem pole for you. It doesn't look anything like a totem pole for for the first thing. <laughs> I don't think these people have seen totem poles. I guess not because this basically looks like three stacks of 50, 50 barrel uh, drums standing up. And somebody did some clay on the outside of them. That's where all their uh, budget went. That's where the budget went. And in the, <laughs> and in the center of it, there's this kind of skeleton-looking thing that's holding another skeleton thing. Yeah, and uh, supposedly this is the uh, this is uh, this is Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> It's the spirit of Shakira, and she's coming to kill everybody. That's kind of what I got out of it. Shakilia. Shakilia. Uh, but Whitman says he saw this in a dream, which I'm going, okay, which one? The one with the dude with the thing coming out of his stomach or the dude with his face that's melting? Which dream is it there, Whitman? And then we get this real, it's just, this is where the director becomes artistic. And he lines all the actors up side by side. It looks like a Beatles album cover. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> like it's weird because it's like there's not one shot in this movie that looks like they tried for anything except for this one. <laughs> and it's and it's dialogue where they're talking to each other, but nobody's looking at each other. <laughs> it looks like you say Beatles. It looks like an an America album cover to me. Mm. It looks like a Devo album cover. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not worth looking at. <laughs> We once worked on a movie with no budget and no name. <laughs> Going through the mountains with the winter beast. <laughs> oh, God. But they're just standing side by side, but a few feet in front of each other, and they're all looking the same direction, but talking to each other. And that's just not natural. Yeah. This is this is one of those shots that he probably spent like half a day working on right. where, you know, half the stop motion animation was done in 15 minutes with some bu- like juicy fruit and some like <laughs> bubblicious. <laughs> the couple old Barbies. Oh, man. It's uh, it's unreal. Anyway, the priorities, man. The priorities are priorities. right in this movie. <laughs> well, the priorities change year by year. When you know this year, it's about get, getting the totem pole done. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that, it, and I saw that uh, the plot was possessed totem poles, I almost did this movie on Kruger Nation once because I remember that synopsis. <laughs> and then it's funny because the more I watch this movie, I'm like, when, when are they going to have killer totem totem poles in this? <laughs> right. Well. Well, we'll get to it. It's not really killer totem poles, but it at least tries. Uh, so now, guess what? It's Fall Fest time. That's what we've been waiting on this whole time. Not not winter time, so we can have a winter beast, but Fall Fest time. So I think we need to change the name of this movie to Fall Beast. Autumn Beast. <laughs> Autumn Beast. And uh, Whitman goes to talk to Sheldon again. Remember Mr. Sheldon earlier? And he's like, look, uh, we, we, we can't find the dudes, and we found this weird thing out there, and we don't know what's going on. He's not going to help him. Look, man, I got people coming in, and our 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 customers are happy. They're having a good time, and I don't want them worried about this crap. And uh, he just won't help him any. And then it cuts back to the Indian souvenir shop, and uh, this is where Sally... And Whitman are walking together, and this is a big scene here where you can tell that some of this was shot in the old times and some was shot more (laughs) new because she's got long, black, ravenous hair, and, you know, he's got a full mustache and the hair, and they stop and start talking. The next thing you know, she's got like a barrette in her hair that she didn't have earlier, and you can tell it's older footage. And he doesn't have as, as his hair is not as thick as it was. Like he had a haircut, and it's just like wow. They didn't even try for <laughs> continuity with this at all. And 
it messes with your head. You can't even pay attention to what they're talking about because you're too busy watching it go back and forth between haircuts and barrettes. But this is this is where she brings up Shakira. Uh, and the mountain folklore and the murders that happened back years ago. And he's like, ah, you're full of it. Now, this is something interesting because she talks to Whitman in third person at this point. Unless I'm just really missing something and this dude is not Whitman that she's with. She even says, well, you know how Whitman is. He doesn't react to these things. He doesn't believe these things like we do. I'm like... You're talking to Whitman. He's standing right there. That just kind of blew my mind. I had to watch that like four times to go, oh, now, wait a minute. Is this Whitman or is it not Whitman? Does it really matter? I guess not. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Uh, it just. But anyway, she gives this backstory of this legend of what happened before. So maybe this is Sally's point, right? This is why she's in the movie because she knows the history that nobody else is going to tell Whitman because everybody else hates Whitman for some reason. Probably because he's a, a park ranger that doesn't really range the park or the forest or whatever. He just kind of sits in his office and reads nudie mags. I don't know. <laughs> Did you get to the scene where um, the plaid plaid shirt guy was just standing next to the Indian, the Dime Star Indian for like 10 minutes? <laughs> hey, we haven't got there oh, yet. Oh, yeah. We haven't got there, no, yet, haven't but got there it's, yet. It's okay. coming, though. It's coming for sure. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, that's uh, that that uh, that's a nice attempt at humor." <laughs> uh, and this is uh, this is the next. I guess it's that night. Then Whitman and sunglasses and Charlie. Which Charlie is the guy you were just talking about that owns the Indian souvenir shop, who reds, wears red flannel all the time. I don't understand how he even became a part of this. Maybe they just kn- knew each other from before. I- yeah, he's a town local. <laughs> yeah, but they go out that night and they see a sign. It's like no exit or whatever, but it's been tore up by some kind of beast apparently. And sunglasses are like I like to get my hands on the punks that did this, and they're like, "No, man, look how high up it is. It's got to be some kind of beast." So there you go. <laughs> We're getting the story of these things are big, and you know, like we said, we saw rapey Groot, you know, grabbing a woman earlier. But then this <laughs> this gets to Charlie's place, right? So we've just met Charlie. He's been hanging out, going and looking in Indian burial grounds and totem poles, runs the souvenir shop. And he, I guess he's got a, I don't know if this is a restaurant, if it's just where he lives. But they go in this room to sit down at this table, and he's talking to Whitman. And on the wall behind him looks like the heads of Grand Funk Railroad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, he's he's killed Mark, Don, and Mel, and they're stuck on a wall. (laughs) But then uh, this is when Charlie shows Whitman the box. Did you guys really look in that box when it's sitting on the table? I'm looking at that scene right now. It's a dildo in there. Yeah. It's a big old dog. Or a penis, yeah. It's huge. (laughs) It's the whole box. But when he pulls the thing out, he pulls out the little bitty thing. It's off to the side. I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) The girl just licked her lips. <laughs> I mean, that's not what he wanted to show him. He wanted to show him the walrus tooth <laughs> that's on a necklace. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. A walrus tooth? How in the world? Uh, I'm just throwing this out there. And apparently this was given to him by Burning Wolf, right? He's like, oh, Burning Wolf. He's a he's an honest dude. He, he wouldn't lie to me. I was like, his name is Burning Wolf. <laughs> How honest can he be? <laughs> But he tells him supposedly this is a walrus tooth. Now, dude, uh, like I, the, when they said walrus tooth, I'm sitting there thinking like, did nobody, did nobody think anything of that? They don't live on the ocean. Like, <laughs> That's my point. What does it have to do with an Indian at all? <laughs> It'd be different if it was a, a crow's foot or a chicken foot or no, man, a walrus tooth. That's what we get. Yeah, they could have said anything. Yeah. <laughs> But never mind the big the big uh, dildo that's in the box. We're not going to talk about it. that. That belongs to yeah. Lucy. This is Lucy's in box. The box. <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> I'd love to see that like like superimposed into seven, just a giant dildo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then straight out of this, it cuts to these two ladies that are hiking. And, dude, they've got big 80s hair, man. So we've gone from the 85 hair to the Sunset Strip. 
<laughs> 80s yeah. dudes right here, man. And the big the, worms. Yeah, and they're out walking around and they find a suitcase. Okay. <laughs> Don't know what this has to do with anything, but they found a suitcase, and then there's an earthquake. Okay. <laughs> well, there's an earthquake, or it's a camera guy that's just learning how to make it seem as though there may be something wrong with the the, the, the earth. That was uncomfortable, that scene, watching that camera oh, it's shake. Bad. It's bad, yeah. I mean, it's it's almost like, you know, 50 sci-fi spaceship, you know, kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> The girl's falling all over the bushes. This <laughs> 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 giant head popped out of the ground. Yeah, so apparently when you find the suitcase and there's an earthquake, then a, a giant Bigfoot's going to pop up and he's got black ping pong ball eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the thing is none of these creatures look threatening, but everybody's scared of them. And they all get killed. <laughs> and they all get killed. <laughs> Both of those girls get dragged off by the thing when one of them could have just ran away. And of course, the one is grabbing a hold of the suitcase and holding on to it, and you're like, you don't even know what's in that. Maybe it's a big dildo. Maybe maybe that's the tie-in. I don't know. <laughs> hey, she was just wanting to see, like us, if there was any plot developing. Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe, a scavenger hunt for dildos. Maybe the original script is in this box, and we'll find out what's really going on. Uh, meanwhile... Charlie, who's the owner of the the souvenir shop, is back at the totem pole taking pictures. And again, I'm like, how do y'all not know this is there? I mean, you built a shop here. You run a shop. This thing is within walking distance. Blows my mind that this thing is such a mystery. And then after this, Charlie goes back to Sergeant Whitman's headquarters. And obviously they're inside the office. And they come walking out, I guess so you can see the sign that says it's a headquarters, but they do this long walk up to the camera and then start their dialogue about looking at the pictures. I'm like, why wouldn't you look at the pictures in the office? <laughs> you got to walk all the way out here, not talking to each other, walking behind each other, and then get up here and then start the dialogue to look at the pictures. And uh, also at this point, uh, Sergeant's, like his mustache is really shrunk at this point. It's like almost a pencil thin, pencil thin mustache at this point. So it's like this dude is a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> and at the library, he, he goes to the library after this, and he's got a big, huge mustache. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, wow. <laughs> with his, fa- his flannel vest. And Sheld- Sheldon's sitting there reading his books. He's always going back and finding Mr. Sheldon to say, look, I really need your help. And you know the guy ain't going to help you. Why do you even waste your time? Anyways, he goes in there, shows him the pics. He's like, oh, what is this supposed to mean for me? It don't mean nothing to me. These are just some pictures. And he, again, wants him to shut the lodge down so they can do an investigation because of the missing people. Then uh, it cuts to Charlie sitting at his table, and he's found a book in the library. <gasps> what? A book in the library that's going to tell you about where you live instead of knowing the history yourself, being that you run a souvenir <laughs> shop on an indoor reservation slash burial ground? Stupid. <laughs> but he says, hey, this book says that the, 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 that totem pole out there is the gateway to hell. <laughs> well, ain't that nice to know? Just an update, folks. We're only at 32 minutes of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all this. All this for 32 minutes. We've already talked 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Over 30 minutes worth of film. That's how crazy the, this thing yeah, is. But- I feel like once you get to like the the last third of this movie, it's a lot of just people falling in a hole. (laughs) (laughs) Don't we live for that, Johnny? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But when he's telling his girlfriend that apparently the big dildo belongs to, that this is the gateway (laughs) to hell, these blue lights come on and there's another earthquake. But that's it. Nothing else. There's no notice every time they go back to that. Where the three Indian heads are on the wall, there's that fucking milk jug on the, yeah. t- on the table. Every time. Like, yeah. Yeah. Must be spoiled by now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been there for days. That's how they do. That's, that's just them. <laughs> I mean, this they is like they're puppy this, chunky. It's really set up like it's going to be some kind of like a Fulci film, right? You know, oh, we're reading this thing and it's incantations from hell and then the blue lights and the earthquake and then spiders will come rip out your tongue or something, right? No. No, it just. Blue lights, earthquake, then we just cut to another scene. That's all. <laughs> Dude, you, like so far we've mentioned 
We've mentioned seven Fulci films, Brian De Palma's <laughs> blowout. I think we said something Jones? about Tarantino and, and Zombie. Josh mentioned. Dude, Stop, I'm zombie. Yeah, I'm zombie. It's, it's, it's just really funny that uh, this movie, like, we're having to give people examples of good stuff because of how piss poor this is. <laughs> oh, you want piss poor? The next scene is where the dude's propelling <laughs> down the cliff. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. So this <laughs> random dude in kind of military garb is just going down the side of the cliff on a rope. And then all of a sudden, this claymation beast shows up. It wouldn't even have made it on Land of the Lost, <laughs> the TV show. That's how bad this thing is. It looks <laughs> terrible. And it's like salivating, grabs the rope this dude is on and pulls him up and rips dude's head off or something. <laughs> that's it. That's I mean, that's all it does. I mean, it's like, wow. And that's the only... Uh... The only shot of any type of winter, too, because there's icicles and stuff on that wall he's climbing oh, down. Oh, yeah. How about oh, yeah. that? Right. They, the, only, the only sense of winter in the movie. Wow. It's a good thing it's winter there and it wasn't where everybody else was. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. You find out later on that apparently this guy was a ranger, too. Or at least worked with the rangers because later on somebody else is missing he's like two two more of my people are missing i'm like who's the other person oh it's got to be the dude that was going down the mountainside you know hey i need you to go out and look for people screw that i'm gonna go <laughs> i'm gonna go pal down a cliff <laughs> <laughs> for no reason either right. Just, <laughs> it's like fucking ice water down below <laughs> and, and come on man let's talk about this creature again because the thing the, the, the thing has these dance moves <laughs> I mean, it's it's popping and locking and doing all kinds of stuff, man. It's like, man, this thing's gonna. It's looking for a, a piece of cardboard. Is what it's looking for. It's gonna do a coffee grinder here in a minute. Break, it's breaking three winter beast. <laughs> uh, and he just snaps the dude's head off, and then it cuts to uh, Whitman and sunglasses. No, Charlie and uh, a girl with blue gloves on. Hanging up missing person posters. I'm guessing the girl with the blue gloves is also the same girl that has the dildo in the box. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm just again. I'm One just hair changed three times already. I'm kind of shooting in the dark because it, it it you never hear her say a word till now. So again, Whitman goes and actually shuts down the lodge. He puts a sign out front saying they're shut down. Blah blah blah. And for some reason, Mr. Sheldon's there and he's dressed like Colonel Sanders. In this white suit with the little black black bow tie. <laughs> Did y'all notice that? Yeah. What? <laughs> he couldn't find he, he couldn't find his anchor suit. Like, I guess not. Like one. <laughs> Man. And then while that's going on, then you got Sally, who's out investigating as well. I don't know if they're actually looking for the missing people that's been missing for a few days now, but she finds a tombstone. Which is Reverend John Sheldon. So I'm gathering. Uh, you you guys correct me if I'm wrong or if you even know. I'm guessing this is Mr. Sheldon's dad. No idea. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. But the grave has been like opened. And you see her. Well, you hear her. You don't actually see her because they're not going to show you anything because they don't have the money. She opens it up and apparently we don't know if she sees anything. She doesn't see anything. But all of a sudden, guess what happens? That's right. A zombie pops up out of the ground. Just what we needed in a Winter Beast movie. <laughs> to the point, too, that he's even it's even dressed up like a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, we've gone from stop motion creatures to now we're just putting, you know, Ziploc bags on people's heads, spray painting them blue and having them pop up out of the ground. You're welcome, world. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Whitman and Charlie go back to the lounge. And say that, hey, we got two more rangers that are missing. And so now it's Sally and Mr. Cliffhanger Dude. After they get through this conversation, then Whitman and Charlie go back into a, a weird room with just a chair and like a table with a lamp on it. And they start talking about life. <laughs> it's like, I was like, don't y'all have other things to worry about than uh, well, what about that girl? I mean, you got a girl and you don't seem to know what to do with her. And I'm like, who asked out for this crap? And then all of a sudden at the lodge, you kind of see Mr. Sheldon pulling some ropes. And apparently he's got 
Shelly's body and he puts her in the in the the like the ticket booth, the office booth right there in the front of the lodge. Because that's what you do when you you do that. <laughs> I mean, I got so many questions. One, I mean, did did the zombie bring it to bring her to you? Did the zombie like call you and say, "Hey, got her"? <laughs> uh, anyways, Mister Sheldon has Sh- Sally's body, and he's tied her arms up to ropes, and he's got her hanging in the the office. He was fingering her wound. Yeah, he was. Yeah, right in her <laughs> neck. Weirdo. Yeah, and it, again, it's one of those things they just—it's like, oh, that's a cool effect, but it was cool yeah. three minutes ago. You don't have to keep showing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> So she's dead. It's a big loss because, you know, she knew the history, supposedly. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then Sheldon, Mr. Sheldon, is having a party, I guess. Now, party of one. Party of one. And, you know, remember we talked about the empty grave or we thought maybe it was empty? Well, now we know why because <laughs> puts on a 1950s clown mask, I guess, of some sort. And, Dude, this song, this song goes on for uh, so long. Yeah. My my wife was sitting in here working while I was watching this, and at one point she actually yelled out, "She's like, what are you watching?" Because <laughs> the song just keeps going. It's like some, yeah. it's like some Dutch like children's show. Children's song, music. yeah, yeah. It's 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 <clears throat> yeah, it's weird. It goes on forever, and dude is pantomiming to the song, singing every word. It's a high girl voice, like a kid, like six, seven year old kid singing the song. And he's this could have been creepy, man. This could have yeah, been, yeah. But this wasn't the movie. This is not what they were trying to do. This is exactly so, what, what. This is my Rob Zombie comment, right? Because I think I think this director has the same problem. And I'm not knocking Rob Zombie because, well, let's face it. Yeah, you fuck can. Him. <laughs> I really like one of his movies. The other one's not so much. But uh, I think he's got that ambition, and he tries to put too many things into one movie, and it kind of messes it up, right? Kind of the same thing here. This scene would be great as a payoff in some other movie. Not 40 minutes into the movie. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) But anyway, so this dude is absolutely loony. He's dug up the dead bodies of his relatives, supposedly. He's got them laying in chairs. And he's dancing around to the song and, like, playing patty cake with the dead bodies and all this weird stuff. It's it's It could be creepy if it was cut down by seven minutes. And he has a that weird Malcolm McDowell look about him at this point where he's, like, totally lost it, right? You know what I mean? It's like when oh, Michael yeah. McDowell has that crazy kind of stare that he gets in like Clockwork Orange and stuff. This dude kind of... He's just kind of like looking off in the distance. Yeah. And uh, the, the the scene really reminds me of Deranged. Oh, yeah, I have. That's a great movie. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of something right there where he's got all the bodies around and stuff. So Whitman and, and Charlie decide to, to go and, uh, and investigate. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Whitman goes in the front office and finds Sally strung up, and Charlie wanders into Dude's office where all this is going on, and he's just in shock. I, I think he is. I still haven't put my finger on, is this how you would react <laughs> if you walked in and saw this going on? Because Dude doesn't really do anything but just stand there like, what am I seeing? Well, it's kind of like watching this movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And what's funny is, I I don't know why, but Charlie's walking around with this stone Indian head in his hand. (laughs) There's no explanation (laughs) given to any of that. Yeah. But then he finally says, I guess he finally starts going, okay, this is getting creepy. And he grabs a spear, and you're thinking somebody's going to jump up. Well, it ends up being Whitman. Now, this is what I love. Whitman comes all the way in there. He's got to hear the music. He's got to see what Charlie's seeing. And he goes... Hey Charlie, come here. I got to show you something. <laughs> I'm like, don't you want to see that? <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even doesn't even care that the girl that he knows is dead dead on the wall over there. Well, it's just the fact of you know you got crazy Sheldon running around playing patty cake with dead bodies with a clown mask on. Uh, you know, oh, come here. I got to show you something. Wow. Then they confront Sheldon. I guess, yeah, he goes and shows her that Sally's missing, but then they confront Sheldon, and we get the big reveal, I guess. 
Is there, <laughs> is, is there a reveal here? I mean, obviously he's in tight with whatever's going on here, and ask him why? Why do you want all this to happen? Why do you want all this chaos? And then it flashes back to, to the ranger with the skeleton head busting out of his chest again. Like we're going to know who this is. Exactly. And how it makes sense. But it shows more of it, which is always a blessing. <laughs> and, you know, it, it. the dude falls on the ground and this skeleton thing, which is almost kind of like a spine or something. And it starts crawling off. And then it just morphs into, I guess, what we're going to call the Winter Beast. I just call him WB. <laughs> Big WB. Nickname terms with it. And then Sheldon laughs. It cuts back to Sheldon. So, obviously, that was supposed to explain <laughs> the whole point of this movie. And it did so well. That's, I know. <laughs> that, now we can cut back to Sheldon, and he laughs, and then his head explodes it catches fire and fire starts coming out of his mouth and his head just bursts into flames you would think that would be the end <laughs> oh no we still got 16 more minutes <laughs> dude I, I yeah and and i think honestly i think the last the last act of this movie is the most painful <laughs> it's like you're just is there an end to this thing <laughs> well, that was me watching it the whole time. I'm like, I, I kept pausing it to see how much time is left. And even when there was only like four minutes left, I'm like, how is there four minutes left? <laughs> <laughs> he had to go take a shower after he's done watching it. <laughs> I had to rethink my, my, my stance on there being any kind of like movies. <laughs> like this may have ruined it for all of them. Yeah, man. Oh, I so, love it. <laughs> so after we just had the traumatic night, of seeing dead bodies and one of our fellow workers dead, and we know that there's a winter beast. We got WB out there wandering around. <laughs> Dude's head just caught fire. The next day at the Ranger Park, it's just business as usual. I mean, uh, you know, Whitman's at a counter giving somebody a map, and the phone rings. He's like, uh, "Hold on, Charlie. Uh, let me let me let me take care of this business." And even Charlie says, "So how's business?" I'm like, "You guys just went through all this traumatic stuff last night." And the next morning, you're like, so how's business today? Is everything going good? I'm like, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. And then he tells Charlie, he's like, look, man, I know that totem pole is evil, so I'm going to send sunglasses out there to tear the Joker down. Yeah, that works <laughs> out great. So uh, sunglasses walks out there and swings an axe, and the creature reaches down and like grabs him and then just sets him back down. And then he runs off. <laughs> so, killer totem poles. And all he did was pick the dude up and then set him back down and he runs off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you took this many notes. <laughs> you know what's to. funny, though? Like, uh, most movies we, we cover, like, <laughs> I can I can uh, justify it. But, like, I had a hard time with notes on this one. I did, too. <laughs> oh, man. So, well, because somebody has to clarify the meaning of this movie, and they might as well oh, be doing me. a hell of a job. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, why you're the host. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, and then all of a sudden, after he gets set down by the totem pole, it cuts away to some abandoned houses, and you got sunglasses and Whitman walking around, and it looks like the Depeche Mode video for Personal Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> just a lot of walking and no talking and the music sounds like Depeche Mode and more haircuts I mean we just and, yeah keep... mustache has a Hitler mustache in this part yeah, now yeah and uh, so they're wandering around these houses why we don't know we have no idea are we still looking for dead people well you found some dead people so why are we wandering around these houses that are abandoned and then, uh, then all of a sudden, there's a chicken lizard. <laughs> <laughs> He's part chicken, part lizard. Comes over the top of a house. Uh, He's giant. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's uh, and and during the whole thing, there's no dialogue. There's no look out, it's coming or none of that stuff. It's just a chicken lizard going Rawr! and Depeche Mode playing in the background, and sunglasses is running around, and then. Uh, Whitman falls into a hole, 
and it takes it, sticks. It's like it's like full of like uh, yeah. those like those painting sticks that they they let you <laughs> see they let you see at like a Lowe's or something. And it's funny because the whole time it's like it's like he's trying to go deeper. It looks like he's not even trying to climb out of it. And there's right. like sticks falling in, and he's moving the sticks. I'm like, what is going on here, man? <laughs> and that uh, again, that goes on forever. Well, because again, it's the director going, okay, so right now, don't struggle so much, okay? Don't struggle, okay? Try to go down deeper. All right, now try to pull yourself out, okay? Now stop struggling again. <laughs> and they just left it yeah. all in there. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. You act like these people had direction. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, the chicken lizard uh, gets a hold of sunglasses and, and uh, bites his head off. So there's the yep. end of uh, sunglasses, even <laughs> though he was supposed to be killed by a killer totem pole. He yeah. had a good run. He wasn't killed by a killer totem pole. He wasn't killed by a WB. He was killed by a chicken lizard. <laughs> <laughs> the CL, man. And this we looks like, you. This looks like dead up summertime, too. This does not look winter whatsoever. And then you get the weird scene where Charlie freaks out. He's sitting there with the Grand Funk Railroad behind him and says, <laughs> Oh, no! And he jumps up and takes off running. And he goes to a chicken farm. Because that's what you do when you panic. Um, chicken lizard, chicken farm. Yeah. And inside the chicken farm... You think it's another chicken lizard? Hell no. <laughs> it's a it's a giant stop motion eagle vulture. I don't know what it, it was is. was bird. I don't know, dude. It was some kind of like predatory bird. <laughs> the chicken lizard thing would have made sense in the chicken farm. But nah, that's not that uh, whoever. But anyways <laughs> He's trying to make sense. Yeah. The, the 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 eagle vulture thing like flies up and it scares Charlie and he rolls down a hill very badly. But lucky for him, because rolling down the hill he found a truck. So so he jumps in this truck and uh goes to the totem pole, pours out a bunch of gasoline, and I love how the gasoline works here. Cause he pours it all over it, then he throws the match down on the gas, then runs off, and it's just an explosion. <laughs> Kids, I'm just telling you, gas don't work that way. <laughs> don't be blowing up total poems with gas. It doesn't work like that. Then it just cuts to Whitman, who, for some reason, is all battered and bruised now. Don't know why. He fell in a oh, hole. He fell through the floor. <laughs> he fell. He fell in a hole full of paint sticks, <laughs> and uh, apparently he's, he's he broke his spirit. I guess I don't know, but apparently he. I mean, he looks like he's been beat up. Guess who he finds? That's right, good old WB, standing on a hillside, just waiting for him to show up. This this guy kind of looks like he looks like a professional wrestler, and they glued some horns on his head. Uh, uh, well, he kind of looks like a uh, typo negative. He, Pete Steele. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it, it's very it's like very like Pete Steele mixed with uh, like Beazel Boss at the end of Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And then uh, Charlie finds Whitman while he's running away from from WB, which they go through a cornfield, and right on the other side of the cornfield is Charlie in a truck because you can drive a truck right up to the edge of a cornfield and find your friends. They can't find people in the forest that they've been looking for for days, but he can find Whitman <laughs> outside a cornfield in a truck. Maybe Charlie should be the park ranger, the forest ranger, and these other yahoos should run the shop. Then maybe that's a movie upgrade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the Dude, yeah, there's definitely some, some upgrades. This uh, one, I mean... But... It's it's short lived though because they get in the truck and then I don't know I don't know if WB just farts or what but he blows the truck up and they crash. Charlie kind of gets thrown out of the truck and then WB he's starting to really look like like a bad guy from Six Million Dollar Man. It's all these slow mo shots and he's picking up big logs and holding them over his head. Actually, it's not very big log. It's only it's like a branch. And uh, then then Whitman starts shooting at him with a flare gun. Yeah, I mean, flare guns, giant sticks, <laughs> whatever you got. Really. <laughs> whatever it takes. I mean, a flare gun? That's that's what you come to fight with? A flare gun. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, you got big explosions going on. And then all of a sudden you got some 70s wah-wah music going on. 
chow in the background. It sounds like an episode of Six Million Dollar Man that's happening right here. And <laughs> then, uh, then Charlie <laughs> throws throws Whitman the tallywhacker necklace. Here, man, hold this walrus tooth up, and that'll really make him react. I think we don't really know. We were just told by an old Indian dude named Burning Wolf <laughs> that this would work. So he's got the walrus tooth necklace, and uh, then then uh, WB starts coming after Charlie, and he knocks Charlie down. Then Charlie looks across the, the, the floor of the field or wherever he's at and sees that stone Indian head again that he was carrying earlier, which totally makes sense. And he picks up the stone head and... and Shows it to WB, I guess, and then his mouth and his eyes start popping out of his out of his face. I mean, his teeth start coming out and his eyes start blowing up. And then I'm trying to figure out: Does Whitman shoot the stone head? Does Whitman shoot WB? Does he shoot Charlie? Who's he shooting at here? Dude, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't either. And, and, what's, with, and what's with the walrus you, tooth? You spent four hours with this thing. <laughs> I thought he was shooting at the head. Well, that's what I thought. I'm like, what good does that do you? Because the kid was holding it steady, steady for him, and then like the minute before, just before he shot, he like ran away from it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, go. <girl. laughs> it, was a, it was a strange scene. And then uh, then WB blows up. And that's the end of the Winter Beast. And then the guy said, next season we're hunting for bears. (laughs) (laughs) And then they swim in together on barrels. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lord and mercy. (laughs) So you guys are happy I recommended this movie for you, huh? I'll never be I'll never be called back again. I'll tell you this. I, I can't imagine I mean and I know there's crap out there, but I can I want to see the movie that rivals this. Oh, Not do, soon. I don't want to see remember, it soon. If I can but, remember the name of that other movie, I will be back on this show. The double bill? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll be sick that week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna text uh Bo later and find out what the name of that movie was. Wow. I just, yeah, man, this movie. Do you guys get any good lessons from this movie? Yeah, don't uh, don't start making a movie and trying to finish it 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only thing this movie was missing was, you remember a, in a lot of those, a winter beast, yeah, and, and the winter. Um, but you know, in a lot of low-budget movies in the 80s, like, they just used a lot of the free footage of John Carradine. <laughs> like this movie was just missing that carrying footage. Oh, it just was, man. It. That would have made it just like Jacko, right? <laughs> <laughs> man, it, Jacko. I mean, look at look at Jacko compared to this man. That movie. Whew. I want to watch Jacko again. It's a work of art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Neil? Oof, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there was really anything we uh, we could get off of this movie. For me, common courtesy uh, can sometimes be mistaken for a gay marriage proposal. <laughs> so there's a, there's, a, there's the there's scene where the two guys are standing. It's pretty close to the beginning of the movie. They're standing in front of this house that they're saying is some kind of restaurant. It's obviously just a house they're standing in front of. Uh, <laughs> But he's like, hey, he's like, yeah, he's like, I don't wake up early like you stupid arranges. And he's like, oh, he's like, well, you want to go inside this restaurant here and get something to eat or some coffee? And he's like, oh, what did you, what, what you slow down when out on a date when you trying to marry me? I'm like, you just said you were tired, dick bag. Yep, that's sunglasses and double flannel, man. Dick Sergeant. Dick Sergeant. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, what were they thinking, man? You got, oh, you got, oh my God. It's like the whole movie. Uh, there's, I mean, I don't know where you start. I mean, do you start with you put a zombie in this movie when everything else is a stop motion creature except for the winter beast? <laughs> what were you thinking? Or hey, you put stop motion creatures in this movie when you've got a dude dressed up like Pete Steele? What were you thinking? That uh, could have been the whole movie. That that could have been the villain, man. Just the dude dressed as Pete Steele. Right. Well, I think that's kind of what it should have been being that that's what's on the cover of the movie <laughs> oh man the cover of this movie is misleading as hell dude there's like there's like three or four different box arts or posters and they are a million times better than anything in this movie what about you neil 
what were they thinking when they did said this would be about totem poles of death? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know who wrote the synopsis on this or who pitched it, but I'd be really angry if I like backed this financially and I didn't see a damn totem, totem pole like <laughs> slaughter going on. Also, what were they thinking writing this movie while they taking a hit of meth? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man! It's like so, this, what we're gonna do, man, is we're we're gonna call it Winter Beast, and because we're we're vaguely in the mountains, people just believe it's winter. <laughs> Uh, to me what were they thinking introducing so many characters but never explaining who any of them are right like there's a lot of people that just they just are dropped into this movie and like i said at the beginning it's like a little exposition a little backstory give me something man because if you're gonna make this movie as long as you made it which is pretty close to feature length you need to do some kind of like development on yeah anything a freaking walrus tooth (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that yeah <laughs> i mean how much cooler would it have been if he was actually standing out there looking at winter beast and holding that big dildo up in the air i mean dude <laughs> i don't apologize <laughs> no, nor nor should you uh you shouldn't apologize because we we asked for this yep. we asked for our own torment you you you, um. you delivered exactly what we asked for and, and this this right here, for people listening who are suggesting movies, this is – I mean, I'm not saying we want Winter Beast every week or every time we do this, but this is kind of what you're competing with, uh, yes. with you know, sending bad movies this direction. Yeah. When you say Ford Fairlane is a bad movie, you need to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Part 6. <laughs> right. Well, that's like – well, I was telling my wife, I'm like – well, I was trying to explain this movie to her when it was over, and I said – I said there are movies like The Room and Bird Dimmick where they're awful movies, but they at least have like a cohesive storyline and they get from like point A to point B in and, and man, those are terrible movies, but but they have some kind of charm there where this movie is just just defecating all over itself. Yep. Duty on the street. <laughs> it just sat there stinking. <laughs> How would you upgrade this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, did you guys ever I notice find the every copy about and the burn it. movies over and over again? <laughs> yeah, that's how you'd yeah, upgrade uh, the society of cinematic viewers. <laughs> exactly. Nobody else ever has to see it. It's a great movie. Come on. There's other stuff Never out. released there should the be show. There's a show that highlights movies that everyone else seems uh, you to know, skip over. I think like, you. Uh, oh, I always wanted more to more Depeche Mode. And I want someone to know what you do. There's no limit to. We can call it the ABCs of Hidden Horror. Just a plot. And we'll go through the alphabet. Plot. Talking about our favorite horror <laughs> yeah. flicks that get ignored. Get Red Rob idea. Zombie remake the whole thing. <laughs> Join Pick Brian, me. Dave, Pick and me. Jamie for the get ABCs of Hidden Horror the on the Horror Theory Network, <laughs> where we might discuss some of your favorite movies or introduce you to something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll probably actually have to be Rapey Groot. Pick one winter beast and stick with it. <laughs> Dude, that 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 is a great improvement because there were just too many of those whatever the hell they were supposed to be going on and there were you know that last one would have worked for the whole movie it's that power of the shakira like they were talking about you know that uh you know it, it calls all the evil spirits from the indian world so apparently these are all indian monsters i guess <laughs> i i think that that uh the shakira thing is called whenever wherever <laughs> <laughs> yeah. first. Winter beasts don't lie. <laughs> what about you, Neil? Upgrade. What are we doing? Upgrading it? Uh, I go. Well, yeah. One, like I said, the Rob Zombie can remake it, and it can't be any worse than than what it is now. But maybe Ooh. just redoing all of the stop motion. Actually, having somebody who can do stop motion, <laughs> dude. An Oof. introductory to stop motion. I did better stop motion than this Man. when I was a, when I was a kid with a video camera. Even the Play-Doh looked funny. <laughs> I just love that I, my, every beast did that little dance thing at the beginning, though. <laughs> right? Step to step. My, I have two upgrades for this. And the first one you guys kind of said, too, is uh, I wrote down all Gumby or no Gumby. Right. Just decide if you want to do it and go with it or just stop. <laughs> um, and another thing I thought as, as this movie progressed, I thought – Something that can make this, <laughs> yeah, as this movie as it, it progressed in time. 
but I, I thought if someone recut this, redubbed it, and made it insanely shorter, it might be entertaining. Just because there's enough stuff. If you made this thing into like a 20 minute little, I don't know, it, recut, it could have a lot of stuff that might tell some kind of linear story or at least have, I don't know, something. But you'd have to redub everybody too because none of the dialogue fits in with anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'd use that word, but. <laughs> uh, what would you rate this? <laughs> All right. Where so, would you set it on the box? Yeah, our rating system, uh, Neil, if you don't remember, the, the very front is good, the very back is bad. We got five seats on the bus. Oh, the very back. Yeah. It's not even so bad that it's good. It's just really bad. Yeah. I think you're dragging it behind the bus. Yeah, like <laughs> really. Yeah, this is this is definitely a last seat for me. Yeah. Whew. And I don't have we had a last seat yet? Yeah, I think we've had a couple, but I think Battlefield Earth was there. Star Crash might have, not Star Crash. Uh, what was the star? What was the what was the one that had the ET creature in it? Star something. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can't remember that. You mentioned Dawkins earlier. Oh, yeah. here you go. The totem, the totem pole monster and a skeleton head that rips out of the man's stomach are both props taken from the Dawkins video, burning like a flame. There you go. Is that true? Yeah, that's what it says on IMDb, and they never lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the, their score for this movie is a 5.1, so they lied somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Filming started in 86, but was forgotten. Only two scenes are from 1986. The rest is from 1989. Yeah. So he, he looked at the footage and was like, yeah, this is all crap. Let's just reshoot it all. <laughs> Right. <laughs> then it says the footage from 89 was shot in two days. So there you go. <laughs> that explains a lot. Two days. Wow. <laughs> if you, I mean, if you go through IMDb and you read the, uh, the, the actual reviews that people sat down and, and put down on there, I mean, most <laughs> of them are pretty positive and it's, it's weird because they acknowledge how terrible it is, but I don't even think it's, it's, like good terrible it's just terrible yeah you know like you said if you you can almost edit this down and make it a 20 minute long movie and it might be kind of a wham bam thank you ma'am piece of crap you know whereas here it just drags on and too many things are just out of context they don't make any sense you know a short 20 minute film you can do that and you go okay that was different but for <laughs> for a full length feature you're just kind of like man just go ahead and shoot me <laughs> Put on Bubble Boy or something. <laughs> Dang, which one, John Travolta or the one with G- Gyllenhaal? That's the boy in the plastic bubble. I, that's the one I was actually oh. thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, a fun one. Oh yeah. All right, folks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a short break and try to get this movie out of our mind, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Dude, do you want to see something really scary? It's like when you're sitting at home late at night reading some scary story or something and the dog just hops up and like we runs out of the room for no reason. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> check under the bed at that point. <laughs> but who said it best? Rob Zombie or Samuel L. Jackson? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Welcome to Bright Night. Hey, this is Billy. And this is Scott. And this is a Scary Dad Podcast. (laughs) Join us as we talk about all things scary. Imagine, (laughs) dude, if you you were still conscious for a few seconds, knowing your head was no longer attached to your body. (laughs) So, have you ever played around with a Ouija board? (laughs) You know, no, I haven't. (laughs) And in, like, true poltergeist fashion. (laughs) <laughs> it was built on a graveyard. Oh, man, <laughs> if it's scary, cool, or something we find just plain interesting, we talk about it. Every Monday, available on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher Radio, and on our website at scarydad.com. Groovy. Hey, you guys! All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed that episode. Man, it was grueling. 
for me, <laughs> but uh, we got through it. I, I I don't know that we fully explained this movie because I don't think that's possible. But uh, at least you don't have to watch it because you know that Johnny and Rick both say, don't watch it. But if you're brave enough, check it out. And you can contact us and let us know, you know what? You guys are right. Neil brought y'all a really bad movie. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And you guys can let us know, should he be banned from Short Bus? Or uh, do we need more of these movies? Uh, But man, hey... It's it's always cool. Like I said, I, I I've I've done uh, NFW several times with with Neil, and and I always appreciate going on there and having a lot of fun. But uh, Neil, if you will take this time, man, talk about your shows, talk about your projects, what all you got going on. Let it real. All right. Well, my main one is the NFW podcast, which Ricky said he's been on before, and I think Johnny did one or two in the past. He may he later he's on a, a couple other shows we've mm-hmm. done, but we've worked together before. Oh yeah. Um, that one's been running for a while now. I also do the Heart to Kill podcast with Alex Edwards, where we do uh, action movies like Steven Seagal and yeah. Arnold and Chuck Norris and those type of movies. And I also do It's Not Horror Okay, where we basically just do anything but horror movies. So like we're, coming up, we're going to be doing Fire and, Hi- Fire and Ice, the uh, cartoon. And Is that Pat be- Benatar? <laughs> uh, no, no. Not. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll play that as a uh, music on it. <laughs> uh, we do a lot of cool shit on that show. We did um, Force Five, a karate movie, and oh. you know I'm trying to do a lot of '80s stuff on there. We're doing sword and sorcery movies and stuff like that. So basically, if you like the NFW show, it's basically the same thing, only with non horror movies. We just bullshit and have a good time. But yeah, you know, and then of course I show up on Gary's Cinema, not Cinema Beef, and. Um, Two drink minimum when he does that, and a bunch of other shows. So yeah, I'm around. If you like my voice, you can find me. <laughs> <laughs> so m- most of your shows are over on Horror Figure, which is our our sister station, I guess you would say, sister sister network, brothers network, whatever you yeah. want to call it. But we all kind of intermingle there, and and uh, that's what makes this fun is being able to get together and just uh, talk about the same goofy stuff that we love, and and. Uh, you know, you you called me on pretty early on, and and uh, it, it's always been a blast. So it, it was it was dual time to get you on here, but now I kind of regret it. Uh, <laughs> I, I believe I found the uh, the second half of the show Blood Check. So <laughs> fifteen hey, no, no, miles to blood the check. Blood Check. I blood actually may even own blood, blood Check. I think Joe Bob Briggs did the commentary for that one. I I don't know if it, I'm going to look it up and see it. Because if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's not as bad. It's pretty bad, though. If yeah. you see a bloody sign on the side of the road that says 15 miles to the blood shack. 1971. That explains a lot right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're talking drive-in you know, cinema at that time. So, man, you know, you were just cranking out crap just to fill the, fill the void of not having a movie to show. The uh, the grindhouse circuit was active. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, it's been awesome having you on. I appreciate you coming on and bringing this crapper of a film, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks for coming on, dude. Oh great, it was fun, and uh, just listening to your reaction made it all worth it. <laughs> <laughs> and you folks out there, if you have recommendations for show, you know what to do. Just let us know. We'll tell you. Nope, we're going to do something else instead. Now we'll we'll try to try to get your films in, and and, and uh, we're going to try to get a few more guests to come on. But uh, the bo- the bus continues to roll, and uh, we'll see what what comes up next. If any of you actually seek out this movie, I mean, I pity you. You've been warned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just spent an hour and a half telling you why not to watch this movie. That's right. All right, if you guys don't have anything else, I think it's time for us to say adios. All right, good night. Peace.